going to get into more algebraic identities. So I want to warn you about uh, the algebra we're going to be doing. We're going to start out in this section. The algebra is going to be not too bad. Uh, when we get into 10.4, however, uh, the algebra starts to get uh, quite a bit more difficult. Uh, so do your best here with this algebra because it's going to get uh, quite a bit worse in the next section. So I just want to give you a heads up. All right, we'll start out with the reciprocal identities. So before we saw cosecant, oops, let's start out with secant actually. <clears throat> All right, so secant is one over x, and cosine is regular x. So if I uh, if I raise both sides to a negative first power, this is one over x, one over cosine. So one over cosine is one over x. If you don't like raising things to the negative power, I call this uh, taking the reciprocal. equation. You're taking the reciprocal of both sides, also known as raising to the negative first power. Uh, another way to do this, uh, cos theta equals x, you could multiply by 1 over x times cos theta. I guess you would call this cross dividing, sort of like cross multiplying. Uh, now you need to multiply both sides by this. cos theta cancels cos theta, we got 1 over x equals x cancels the other x, we got 1 over cos theta. So if you want to accomplish the same thing with just multiplication, you got it right there. So either way, cos theta is 1 over x. So putting these together, seek theta equals 1 over x, which also equals 1 over cosine theta. So I can write out secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta. All right, so that's our first identity. So secant is a reciprocal of cosine. In a very similar way, I'm not going to go through all the details, but cosecant relates to sine, so reciprocal of sine, and cotangent is 1 over tan theta. So these are our basic reciprocal identities right here. Uh, we can also write tangent. So let me write, I'm going to work this out over here. Tan theta y over x. And we know y is sine. Theta x is cos theta. So tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is similar, except it's x over y which is cos theta over sine theta. So here's the last two reciprocal identities. So we're going to do an example, it uses these. Given sine theta equals square root 5 over 5, which is not some sides that we've seen before. So this is not going to be an angle that we're familiar with. Uh, 1 half is uh, a value that we've seen, but not for tangent. So this is not going to be uh, See, I think we have to go to the previous page of notes. But if you jump to the previous page of notes, there are some thetas for sine and cosine that give you a half, but none for tangent. So I want to find cosine theta. So notice 
I did not ask for theta. I want to know about cosine of theta. All right, so how in the world can I take sine, tangent, and cosine and group them together in an equation? How do I, oh, look at this right here. That is how tangent relates to sine and cosine. All right, so let's copy that guy down. So this is what we know. Of course, I just put it off the screen. Tangent is sine theta over cos theta. All right, so find cosine theta. So what I wanna do is solve for cosine theta. Comment in green. All right, so how do I solve for cosine theta? Uh, there's a few ways to do it. I could multiply by cosine and divide by tangent. I'll go ahead and do that in two steps here. And now solving all the way for cosine, I wanna get rid of tangent, so I divide. All right, so here's cosine. Now, I know the values for sine and tangent, so I'm just going to go and take the uh, two values at the top of the screen and drop them in for sine. Square root five over five divided by tangent is one over two. This web work will accept unsimplified answers, uh, but I do not want to see multi-story fractions as answers. So the first thing we're gonna do, or the only thing to do here, uh, is multiply by the reciprocal. So you got two square root five over five. My handwriting's pretty ugly. Two square root five over five, there we go. And that is our cosine value right there. So these identities, very important to have these uh, memorized. Okay, so that is our, that's really the only problem we're gonna do for these reciprocals. You're gonna need to use these again and again, and we're gonna use them quite a bit when we get into the tougher identities in the next chapter. So let's talk about um, the Pythagorean identity. So we saw the uh, x squared plus y squared goes r squared. That's the equation for a circle. Unit circle, we got one for our radius, no problem. x squared plus y squared equals one squared, which is one. And I'm gonna use the uh, x equals cos theta on the unit circle and y equals sine theta. So where I see x, I'm gonna put cos, and where I see y, I'm gonna put sine. Now, <clears throat> one thing to notice, this notation looks ambiguous. I need to make sure I take cosine and then square the output of cosine and then take sine and square the output. So you can group it up with parentheses like this. There is some really bad trig notation that unfortunately everybody on the planet has been using for quite a long time. And the way we write cosine times cosine is cos squared of theta. And this is very unfortunate um, because in my opinion, the exponential notation appears in a misleading place. So I'm gonna write a little comment on notation over here. So when you see cos squared theta, just make sure you know it's you're taking the whole cosine theta and then squaring that. 
All right, so there's our first Pythagorean identity right there. Uh, you need to have this memorized right here. This one is going to be a bit easier to memorize than the other two we're about to come up with. So we're going to start with what we know. And I'm going to multiply by 1 over cos squared theta. And of course, you're multiplying both sides. Uh, when you do that, you're definitely multiplying into the 1, but there's two things on the left side that you have to multiply into. So we got cos squared theta over... The reason I did this is so I could reduce this very nicely. Oh, that's cos squared theta on the denominator. So this reduces down to just one. Now I'm going to use the better notation, better exponential notation. So I'm gonna write it as sine theta squared cos theta squared equals one over cos theta squared. All right, the reason I'm doing this is so I can rewrite like this. Uh, one is the same as one squared. So now we switch colors. Uh, so I just basically am bringing the uh, exponents outside in a fraction. All right, what is sine over cosine? We got our reciprocal identity is somewhere up here. We got sine over cosine is tangent. And the other one is 1 over cosine, which is secant. So one of them is going to turn into secant, the other one is going to be tangent. So sine over cosine is tangent. 1 over cosine is secant theta squared. There we go. And I'm going to write, I'm going to reverse the order here. I think that's how it's written in your textbook and I'm going to use bad exponential notation. The reason I'm using uh, this misleading notation is because unfortunately almost every resource you look in is going to use this notation. All right, so that's tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. This one's going to be a little bit harder to memorize and we're going to do the last Pythagorean identity now. So start with what we know again, cos squared plus sine squared equals one. And instead of dividing by cos squared, I'm gonna divide by sine squared, or multiply by the reciprocal of sine squared. And there's, again, three things, just like before to distribute to. I'm gonna take a few less steps here. Okay cos squared over sine squared, well, that's basically tangent, but it's tangent squared. Sine squared over sine squared, that's easy, that's one. Whoa, that's not cotangent, that's not tangent, that is cotangent. Cotangent squared, one over sine squared, cosecant squared theta. All right, so this is our last Pythagorean. There's only three Pythagorean identities, so there's not six. All right, so let's write them all together. So they're in one spot. I think I wrote it as cos squared plus sine squared, so I'm trying to keep the order the same. Cos squared plus sine squared is one. Tan squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. Cotangent squared theta plus one equals squared theta. All right, so this you need to memorize. The first one should be, uh, you're gonna use it quite a bit more. It should be easy to, relatively easier to memorize. I can spell memorize. Uh, so the first one's easier to memorize. The second one, not so easy. You just have to memorize it. Now this last one, if you look, it relates to the one above it. 
So this last one, you're going to co. You're going to co. So if I label one, two, and three, you're going to co equation two. So if you can memorize two, all you have to do is turn tangent into cotangent. So just turn tangent to cotangent and secant into cosecant. So you can get that second one memorized. You basically get the third one for free. So we're going to do a few examples here with these Pythagorean identities. And we're going to find an exact value first. So find the exact value right here. Uh, pi over 12, oh, I don't know really much about pi over 12 at all. So I can't really deal with the angle. I don't know even sine or cosine of pi over 12. If it's pi over six, different story. Uh, but we can't really do anything with pi over 12. But I do see one over secant squared. So one over secant is cosine. So I can first of all rewrite this Sine squared pi over 12 plus co squared pi over 12. So secant squared is the reciprocal of cosine squared. So one over secant squared is just regular cosine squared. What identity can we use here? So sine squared plus co squared equals one. That works for any theta any theta, any real number theta. So it'll definitely work for this pi over 12 right here. So sine squared of this plus co squared of the same thing, that's gonna be one. So this is gonna reduce right down to one.